Hi everyone, my name is Panindra. So in this video, I'm going to explain to you about memory cells. So in this video, I'm going to clearly explain to you about the memory cells and how they are produced and what is their functions and how many type of memory cells are present in our body. Each and everything will be clearly explained to you in detail in this video. So you can watch this video till the end so that you people can clearly understand about this topic called as memory cells. So what is the definition of the memory cells? Memory cells are long lived immune cells capable of recognizing foreign particles that they are previously exposed to. Okay, so memory cells will be present in our body and some will be long lasting and some will be short lasting also. So in this both, what are long lasting and what are short lasting cells will be, uh, I will make you to clearly understand about those cells. Okay, so uh, basically memory cells are in the sense like uh, they will be present in our body. So if the same kind of pathogen will enter into our body, these memory cells will start recognizing those cells which have already previously entered into our body and try to kill those pathogens which will help your body to get protected very fastly when compared to that previous attack okay so this is what about the memory cells so uh, basically these memory cells uh, stages will be involved like for every human there will be two kind of exposures which where he will be exposed to that particular kind of antigen which enters into our body okay so uh, that is called as initial exposure and uh, once if it is attacked to our body again then it is called as secondary exposure okay in the case of initial exposure the memory cells doesn't take part Okay, so uh, the immune response which will be responded for this exposure is called as primary immune response where the memory cells uh, will not be uh, activated or else will not be in function. Okay, whereas in the case of secondary exposure, if the same type of antigens or pathogens will enter into our body, then the memory, memory cells will take place where these memory cells will start initiating the secondary immune response because once the first immune response has been taken place then the memory cells will be generated and those memory cells will take place in the secondary immune response okay so when compared to that of initial exposure the secondary exposure uh, time duration will be very less because of the presence of memory cells right i hope you are uh, you, you I, have, I, I hope i have made you clear regarding this memory cells right so let us uh, also understand about this memory cells very clearly by looking about uh, by looking at these diagrams and all so yeah so uh, in order to understand about these memory cells firstly you need to understand uh, the defense mechanism which takes place okay so that is very important and that is completely a basic thing which i already explained to you in uh, my previous videos also and all the videos are already posted in the description box so you can also watch them okay so oh, let's say these are the pathogens which enter into our body from the external environment let uh, let's have assume let's assume that okay so these are the pathogens which enter into our body from the external environment as we know that they will be con uh, they will be having uh, msc class 2 molecules on its surface right uh, and they will uh, place the particular antigen on its surface hence it is considered as antigen presenting cell in shortly it is said to be as apc right so now uh, as it is uh, you know presenting the antigen on its surface then definitely it will get interacted with the t helper cell right cd4 plus cell it is also called a cd4 plus cell so it will be also having cd4 plus receptors in other words in other terms we can also call it as t receptors okay so now this uh, t cell receptors will get binded over to this uh, pathogen uh, where uh, this, t this t cell receptors will get binded over to that msc class 2 molecules right and uh, will try to intake these antigens to kill them right so now what will be happening this T helper cell will get interacted with the B cell. These B cells are nothing but, uh, as you know, your blood consists of RBC cells and WBC cells, right? In those WBC cells, there will be a quantity of B cells. This plays a major and vital role in the process of the immune response. Okay, so this B, this B cells will get interacted with this T helper cells. And this B cell plays a major and vital role in order to kill the harmful pathogen which entered into our body from the external environment. Okay, so not only one B cell, many type of B cells will get interacted with many type of T helper cells, right? So, remember this term, many B cells will be interacted with many T helper cells, right? And these B cells will get proliferated into plasma cells. This is very important, right? This will get proliferated into plasma cells and these plasma cells will help in releasing the antibodies 
releasing the antibodies and one more important and most important point which you people have to remember is that these antibodies which are released should be equalized to the antigens which are entered into our body as you have remembered the lock and key hypothesis right so this should be completely related to the antigen which entered into our body from the external environment okay so this particular type of antibodies will only be released from uh, the particular plasma cell which is proliferated from the b cell okay so not only one b cell right different i mean different b cells will get interacted with the different t helper cells similarly different type of plasma cells will also be released where different type of and i mean uh, many antibodies will also be released which will get interacted with that antigen and will kill those antigens which enter into our body similarly the pathogen will also be killed so this is how the immune response will occur into your in, in your body in order to protect your body from this particular harmful pathogen which entered into your body from the external environment right so now uh, these antibodies are also called as neutralizing antibodies because they will neutralize the antigen which entered into our body and will kill those antigens hence these antibodies are called as neutralizing antibodies okay and one more important point which you people have to remember is that these antibodies which are released or as these b cells these plasma cells which are released from the b cells are not long lasting because these antibodies which are produced will not be long lasting i mean uh, once the process is done it will be uh, degraded okay it will be degraded and those if you keep those degraded uh, cells aside and the remaining cells will be remained as memory b cells okay and these memory b cells will plays a major and vital role in the secondary exposure so that's what i have mentioned you here in the case of initial exposure these memory cells doesn't plays any important role because here is the stage where the generation of the memory b cells occur okay so here is the stage where the memory b cells will be generated at those memory b cells so here is the stage where the memory b cells are generated from the plasma b cells right so once they are generated and once if the secondary exposure happens once if the same type of pathogen will enter into our body then what will be happening then the secondary immune response will be happen how will be happen with the help of this memory b cells which are already generated in the process of primary immune response these memory b cells plays a major and vital role in order to cure the secondary exposure which are uh, i mean uh, when the same type of pathogen will enter into your body and try to attack your body and uh, the duration of the secondary exposure will be very less because here we have the presence of memory b cells okay so this is how uh, the b cells are generated so basically the memory cells are of two types listen to me properly the memory cells will be of two types memory b cells and memory t cells so this is how the memory b cells are generated and now you have to also understand that how the memory t cells will be generated so now let us have a look about it so now here the t helpers are plays a major and vital role in order to interact with the pathogen and to kill the pathogen right so now in order to generate this memory t cells this t helper cell will get uh, will, will will get proliferated into naive t cell once the function of this b cell and the complete immune response process is done uh, naive t cell will be generated and that naive t cell which is generated will be completely immature in form which means uh, it doesn't have any information in it so it doesn't produce any kind of response those are called as naive t cells and what is the main function of this naive t cell let us have a look about it in order to generate this memory t cells now let's say this is dendritic cell and dendritic cell uh, in the sense like it is an antigen presenting cell where it will present antigen on the mhc class 2 molecule uh, on the surface of this dendritic cell and this will be exposed to the naive t cell remember this naive t cell is completely immature in form because it doesn't have any information in it like it will be present in our body wherever it is that's it that is the function of the naive t cell uh, so the one of the best example which i can tell you is that uh, let us consider this naive t cell as a contract labor this contract labor in the sense uh, he will be remain uh, he will not be do he will not be doing any kind of work until we are going to assign some work for him so if you are going to assign some work for him then definitely he will be doing that similarly this naive t cell will doesn't have any function in it it will not perform any function once if you are going to assign any function for it then it will perform its function that's it okay so here in this case of naive t cell once this dendritic cell will get exposed to this naive t cell then uh, this uh, this naive t cell in the sense it will also con consist of this t cell receptors right 
so these t cells receptor uh, receptors will get binded over to the uh, msc class 2 molecule in order to uh, uh, in order to intake those kind of antigens which are released by the dendritic cells right so once the process is going on this dendritic cell will release certain kind of chemicals called as interleukins especially interleukin 2 uh, so uh, in order to understand about this interleukins i have already made a beautiful video on this interleukins uh, so watch this video i will be uh, I will be presenting that link in the description box so you can uh, go to that video and you can have a look about these interleukins and all. So now once these interleukins are released then this dendritic cell will give training for this knife T cell in order to convert this knife T cell which is immature stage into the mature stage which means this immature knife T cell will get converted into effector knife T cell which means uh, mature knife T cell okay so now this effector knife t cell in the sense which is completely mature in form where it undergoes the process of humoral and cell mediated immunity which means the complete immune defense mechanism will be occurred by this effector knife t cell which is completely matured in form so how it get converted into matured form by the training which is provided by the dendritic t cells once it is get uh, i mean once it is interacted with this dendritic cell so now this effector knife t cell will help this effector knife T cell will help in producing the memory T cells. Okay, so basically, this effector knife T cells will be having IL2R receptors on it. So, as you can see in this, I mean, uh, here we can see ILR2, which means interleukin receptor 2. These are present on the surface of those knife T cells. So, all of these are knife T cells. I have said you, not only one, different type of T cells will get interacted with different type of pathogens which entered into our body. Pathogens in the sense, the example which we took here is dendritic cells. Okay. So, similarly, different type of, I mean, uh, many, many uh, knife T cells will be generated which will be having this ILR2 receptors on its surface. So, so uh, there will be two, here there will be two conditions which means some of these uh, some of these knife T cells will be having many ILR2 receptors, which means many interleukin receptor 2. Okay, so whereas if you see here, uh, this cell has 4, this cell has 3, this cell has 2, this cell has 3, here uh, 4, again here 5. Whereas here, you can see there is only one ILR2 receptor on the surface of this knife T cell. So, uh, these, I mean, uh, those cells which are having only less number of ILR2 receptors on its surface will be uh, remained as memory T cells. Okay, they will be remained as memory T cells. So, uh, in this case, if all of this, uh, all of these cells are having uh, many interleukin receptor 2s, right? Hence, this will continue the process of immune immune defense mechanism which means humoral and cell mediated immunity process will be happened by all of these other cells whereas in the case of this memory t cell will be remained the reason being is it is having only one ilr2 receptor on the surface of its body right whereas remaining all of these things will be remained as the effector knife t cell only where it undergoes the process of humoral and cell mediated immunity so this is how the memory t cells are generated and i already explained to you about how memory b cells are also generated so this is how uh, the function of the memory T cell and, uh, and one more important thing which you people have to remember is that these memory B cells are not long lasting. They are completely short lasting whereas in the case of memory T cells they are completely long lasting because here uh, there will be the presence of effector knife T cells similarly there will be presence of the memory T cells where uh, it is completely short I mean it's completely long lasting where uh, they can easily interact with any type of anti I mean any type of antigens in the sense like any type of uh, pathogens which enter into our body in order to kill them okay so this is these are how memory cells are generated in our body i hope the topic made you clear about uh, the doubts and whatever you have and i hope i made you clearly understand about these memory cells if you like this video subscribe to my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates and if you have any doubts regarding this topic please comment in the comment section i'm going to clarify doubts immediately thank you